Scripture is silent on the matter, and where it is silent, we would do well to be silent. Which is good news? To be wondering if another demon has to be cast out of you as a believer, to have deliverance maintenance done every few months to get rid of the, quote, critters, and to blame the devil for your sin, or to hear the glorious news of the Savior, Jesus Christ, who came into the world sinless, born of a virgin, perfect in all his ways, demonstrating that he was the true Messiah, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, the one who Satan had no claim to and who died to atone for your sins and for my sins on the cross, who was rejected and despised and led like a lamb to the slaughter, taking the punishment you and I deserve. The one who died was buried and rose again in three days. And in this we rejoice because in Christ we no longer owe a debt for sin. And we're no longer under the power of Satan. In Christ the old man has been crucified and buried. In Christ the new man is raised. And in the midst of a fallen world with unbelievers under the tyranny of Satan, we have a hope the world cannot understand, it cannot take away, and it cannot comprehend apart from the Spirit of God. Though we face temptation as believers, we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us, leading us, and guiding us. Though we sin and fail because of our sinful nature and our flesh, we have a high priest ever interceding for us at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Who knows what it means to be tempted in every way, yet did not sin. We can come boldly to the throne of grace, asking God to forgive us of our sins against him and we are brought to conviction only by the Holy Spirit and we believe that we are forgiven and we bear fruit in keeping with repentance and though we are bombarded by extra biblical revelation and experience telling us that even as a Christian demons can set up residence in our soul or flesh we can rest in knowing that we have the word of God to assure us of the truth if you are claiming to have demons cast out of you as a born-again believer I want to lovingly and strongly urge you to test yourself to see if you are even in the faith. Do you know the gospel of Jesus Christ according to Scripture? The gospel is not centered upon what demons have done. The gospel is centered upon what Christ has done. What freedom is there for the believer if demons can indwell? What security and hope does one have in believing this? Is the devil not a tyrant and oppressor, as I said before? If you are a citizen of heaven, what Christ did is sufficient to bring you out of tyranny. It does not mean that you will not face temptations, trials, and difficulty due to the enemy. It means that your battle is from without, not within. Ask yourself, do these accounts in scripture of demon possession and the ones we see from deliverance ministers, do they look similar? Consider they are commanding demons to come out as Jesus did. Consider that the ancient texts agree with demon possession, not merely being demonized. Definitions matter. Do we see any description of believers acting like this in the epistles? Or do we see Paul addressing sin and how to handle it? Do we see individuals coming back for repeat deliverance or deliverance maintenance? Or is Christ's work on the cross sufficient for your deliverance and for my deliverance? What many are being sold is a bill of goods with new packaging of old material with new and fresh faces. Those such as Mike Signorelli state that churches who do not do deliverance are demon daycares, and that pastors who do not cast out demons and support deliverance ministry are working in conjunction with demons, as you heard at the beginning. Isaiah Saldivar will appeal to passages pre-Pentecost in support of deliverance ministry and pose the question that there are no passages stating a Christian cannot have a demon. Well... I would argue that just as the scriptures do not state the word Trinity, we can point to numerous passages referencing the doctrine of the Trinity. The same is applicable for the belief that a born-again believer, sealed by the promise of the Holy Spirit for the day of redemption, cannot be indwelt by a demon. It is an insult to true salvation that can only come through faith in Jesus Christ and to Christ himself. And I personally refuse to believe ever again that the Holy Spirit will cohabit with a demon in a Christian. And this is not coming from someone that was indoctrinated for years, by the way, of believing the opposite. It's coming from someone who all I ever knew was this doctrine of Christians having indwelling demons. This is not freedom. Be cautious of what the world celebrates. Be mindful when Jesus warned of those who would say to him, Did we not prophesy in your name? And did we not cast out demons in your name? 
and be reminded of what he says of those who do not know him. Satan and demons are real. To those who make false claims about those of us who sound an alarm out of concern, please state your facts correctly. If you want to offer a seat at the table for discussion, how about starting with not filling that seat first with the accusation of a religious spirit and demonizing your opponents? I urge you to get back to scripture. I urge myself to get back to scripture.